So today I want to talk to you a bit about the different formats of graphic recording or graphic facilitation, scribing, sketch notes, whatever you want to call it. There are a couple ways of doing graphic recording that we should like parse out at the beginning. The first one would be in present, IRL, you're in the room, you're in the conference, uh, pre-COVID graphic recording. And the second would be online, digital, remote graphic recording. Uh, but I would say between those two different spheres, it's not really a question of the benefits or which is better. It's sort of just whatever the client wants, uh, what environment you're in, uh, if there's a global pandemic or there's not a global pandemic, if everyone can attend or can't attend. Uh, it's not so much normally up to the facilitator. I'd say it's more up to uh, what is safest for the guests, uh, whatever the planner, the event planner, uh, or whatever the presenter has sort of envisioned the conference to be. So in terms of in-person, IRL, you're in the room, feet on the ground, graphic recording, um, there are two, I guess, main different ways of doing it. One would be uh, to do it on a whiteboard and the other would be to draw it with markers um, on a foam board or piece of paper. For the whiteboard, uh, I would say what's best is, is using whatever is already in the space. Um, so if you can get a whiteboard wall, that is definitely ideal. Um, and then in terms of whiteboard markers, what I would normally go for is uh, just black, um, maybe one other color. Um, but what you have to be really careful of is that it is a really saturated color. The reason why you have to sort of be careful of what color you're picking is that when you photograph it, a lot of different colors aren't going to capture properly. Um, and that is obviously not good uh, and extremely stressful as a graphic uh, recorder when you're trying to clean up your picture, maybe add color and send it off to the client and uh, half of your picture hasn't even translated. Don't feel too bad if, uh, if you're not picking lots of colors because in the end you're gonna have a better final product. The other option uh, that you would have in real life would be to draw it with markers. Uh, one way that I've seen it done is on sort of like a foam board mount, I guess, like a foam board that's scored three ways that can be unfolded. Um, with a piece of paper on it and then people draw on the piece of paper uh, it can be removed that can be given to the client and then a new one can be added the other option which is the option I kind of like the most uh, would be to draw directly onto the foam board the reason why I prefer this is one foam boards can be delivered right to the client so if you call up an art supply company and you order like a bunch of massive like seven foot foam boards um, you A, might not have a car, you might not be able to fit it in the car, you might be in your 30s and not know how to drive, like me. Um, there might be a lot of reasons why you don't want to take something over there, a big thing that you have to unfold. Um, you might want to just ship it directly to the client. My preference is always to get the foam board, go big, because your drawings are always better big. It's just they get looser, they look so much nicer, uh, the impact is better, it's more legible, it's more accessible, and then just get them delivered right to the venue. Do that and your life will be a whole lot easier. The last option uh, that you can use for in-person drawing would just be to do it on sort of like a piece of paper, like a notebook. Um, the issue with that is the other participants can't really see, so you're missing the performative aspect. And to me, um, that live aspect is is a really important part of graphic recording. The other thing you can do is use a document reader, which I have done recently, um, and it will project it. Uh, again, the foam board, in my opinion, is better. Drawing on you know, a small cartridge paper is just not gonna look as good, um, but it works, so it's worth a try if you're into it. Digital graphic recording. There are a lot of ways of doing this. Um, I would say that the basic principle of how you do it is the same for all of them, but then whatever platform you use can be totally different. Um, so what I like to use is an iPad um, and my iPad pen, and I like to use Procreate because like for me, Procreate is a really simple tool. I don't need all the bells and whistles of Photoshop when I'm working on something live. Um, it, is like created to work on my iPad, so it's not gonna be slow, it's not gonna be laggy. Then if you want to 
project it, Procreate also has this amazing function uh, that allows you to show your screen, but no one will see what you're doing on your screen. So people will just see the image as things are happening to it, but they won't see your color palette drop down. They won't see you be, like resize things and, and zoom in and all that. Like they'll just see the whole image. And uh, it's a lot less distracting because let's be honest, there is a lot going on on our computers these days already. We don't need a bunch more windows flying around. It's, it's too much. Now the setup uh, to share that, if you want to share it as your camera, is a bit of a lengthy process. You need to get an HDMI capture card, um, a few other things, uh, but it is possible. So I will link another video that shows you how to do that in the description. The other option is you can just share screen uh, at the beginning and sort of like the end of the presentation, at intervals in the presentation. Online, you have a chat function going, you have the presenter, you have the graphic recording, you have people like popping up on their MS Teams to ask each other what they're doing. You have people simultaneously on their cell phones. Like there is like a lot happening. Um, so I actually find that the graphic recording live remotely doesn't always need to be consistently viewed and can actually be like a bit more than is needed uh, when you have so many different things happening on that digital channel already. Um, so what I often do is I just share my screen at the beginning. I explain what I'm doing. I show people what I'm doing. I maybe cut back to it um, before breaks when there's like nice calm intervals to sort of review what's being said, to have a bit of reflective time with the participants. Uh, and then I go back to it at the very end. That works with Zoom. Uh, works with teams. If you're using a software like Miro or Mural, you can draw directly into those softwares. Uh, you can just plug in a tablet um, and use one of the artboards on there. I've done that and have Adder. Um, it won't be as like pretty because you don't have any fancy brushes, uh, but it is fine. <laughs> it does the job. Those are the two main formats for graphic recording and all the sub formats you can manage, whether you're graphic recording in person or online, there's always a way of doing it that's going to be right for you uh, and right for the client. So it's really, I'd say what's really, really important is to have those preliminary discovery conversations with your client and be like, what do you want this to be at the end of the day? And from that, you can find out what's best for them. Uh, and with some of the tips I just gave, hopefully what sort of works best for you also.